Hello, I'm Tom Mintier. Welcome to tonight. Uh, we have a very special guest tonight, Stuart J. Raj, and most people call you Jay. Right. Uh, you are a linguist, and you speak how many languages? Uh, that are fluent, that I'd feel competent in, about 15. That 15? I, yeah. But in total, about 29. Yeah, about 20, 29, 30. But uh, the line between languages, whether it's political or linguistic, they're, uh, they're a bit foggy. But you also serve as a business consultant to help businesses better understand the region. Right. By understanding the language, you understand the politics, you understand the people, you understand the region. Right. There's not, not a lot of money in being a linguist. Uh, so you've, you, you've got to find something that can actually leverage that and uh, bring some other skills on top of it. It's like when you go to a cocktail party and you say, I'm a statistician. Right. It's, it's like <laughs> everyone goes to the other side of the room. <laughs> right. I'm a linguist. Uh, it, it depends how clear you say that word, but uh, yeah. <laughs> they don't want to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, so, but um, in, in, in Thai, I normally use the word ganchon, uh, which is kind of like a buffer, uh, which is whether it be business to business, business to government, government to government between here, China, India, Indonesia. Um, I sort of become the meat between the sandwich. Now, your father is Hindi, your mother is Australian. Right. My father is actually born, he's a Fijian Indian. So Fijian he's, Indian. He looks very Indian. Uh, born in Fiji, uh, so he's quite dark-skinned, and my mother's Australian. Yeah. Where did you get your ability to learn languages? My mother's father, so my, my paternal grandfather, he was a linguist slash communications expert during the Second World War. So he spoke perfect Russian, uh, Spanish, Italian, French, Hebrew, uh, German, you name it. He could speak and it was very weird for an Australian, a white Australian back then in the 40s to be fluent in Chinese. Um, Italian, he had a radio program for years in Australia after the war where it was the Italian radio program on uh, 2SM in Australia with Frank Arena and uh, people thought he was Italian. So uh, <laughs> he, he was very good. Uh, and I guess it kind of rubbed off on me. I listened to uh, an interview you did where you talked about sitting up listening to shortwave radio with your grandfather. Yeah, yeah. And that's how you learned. Yeah, well, that, that, that was one of the things. I still have them. <laughs> my, my wife was, uh, she pulled that shortwave, rave, shortwave radio out the other day when we just moved house and she was wanting to throw it and I had to grab it for my life. Uh, but yeah, we used to tune in to different languages uh, between listening to Morse code broadcasts and um, and language broadcasts we'd try and find a, a language that we but neither of us knew and uh, try and you know work out what they were saying who whoever could work it out first one so most of the languages you not only speak and understand but you can read and write yeah I'll, I'll, I'll never just learn to, to speak a language I think the um, the writing and how how the people that use the language uh, realize the writing system and, and how it links into the way they speak is, is really essential to be able to use the, the language fully. How long did it take you to learn to speak and read and write Thai? The, there, there was a lot of groundwork with other languages in the beginning, but the actual writing system, probably about a day uh, to be able to write it. And, uh, and the tone system is actually based on, on a standard, if you look at, at ancient Chinese, You've got your yin and your yang tone system, uh, which is still exists in Cantonese, and in Thai that tone system is quite similar, so that was, wasn't too much of a bridge. And then about 65% of the words in, that you use in normal Thai or if you're reading probably come from Sanskrit origins, whether through Bali or, or Khmer or whatever the, the language it's come through. So that's covered from my Indian side, and then a lot of the Thai Thai words you could trace into Middle Chinese and Ancient Chinese and Southern Chinese dialects. Um, so the learning curve wasn't that steep. There are a lot of people who study languages, but very few people who know the inner workings of the language, why a, a tone is here instead of here. Right. Uh, this is, this is, I think tones, when, when I hear it in Thai, that you know, you, you speak Thai, Tom. There's uh, no word in Thai for tone. Use the word wanayuk which is basically a color marker. Uh, tones are throat positions at the beginning of a, a syllable and at the end of a syllable. But it's the phalang that come in and hear this tone, and so they're focusing on the tone rather than the, the, what's actually happening with the throat. But it's all in understanding what's going on with your body and then being able to reproduce that.
So your dentist who makes molds of your mouth knows more about languages maybe than yeah. you do. Yeah, I was actually speaking yesterday with my, a friend of mine. We were looking to find a, a system to, I, I want to learn stenography or something that can really put the, the words per minute up when you're typing. And I was thinking of designing a system, someone will probably take a patent on this, but it actually, where you're actually working from um, positions in your mouth and you can just have sensors there and uh, do like a shorthand system using your tongue and the positions in your mouth. Uh, to render sounds on a computer without having to make a noise. Typing in Thai yep. is difficult for Thais. It's because of the way they learn. They, the way they learn. I, I've, if, if you go into my blog, I've got a recipe there um, on how to, whenever I learn any new language, uh, one of the first things I do is learn to type in that language. And uh, so you can, if you can touch type in, say, English, I would say you can remap your fingers to a new keyboard probably in about 15 minutes if you know the alphabet and what they're looking like. Quick question, are you a Mac or a PC person? <laughs> uh, I would love to be a Mac person, uh, but I, for, for what I do, PCs are much more functional. The languages. The languages. Okay, uh, Vietnamese has just been added to the repertoire. We will come back in a minute on tonight and talk about Vietnamese language and how long it took Jay to learn that. We'll be right back.